In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us. For every resource you have blessed us with, Lord. It is your providence, Lord. It is nothing of us, but everything of you. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords. You think through my mind, you speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken in today's class pierce the hearts of those who are listening. And I take authority over every demonic spirit of distraction, disturbance, and unbelief that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you, leave this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders, and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So let's go to Matthew chapter 7 onwards. Okay. I'm not able to share my screen. So can I share? Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah. You can share, Janisha. Go ahead. Go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23. Yeah. Can someone please read it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Sister Jennifer, you can read it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my father, who is in heaven. Now, who is saying this? Jesus is saying this. Okay. So I'll give you a background to this verse. This is the, you know, the sermon that Jesus preached on the Mount. He had gone to the mountain top and he had, you know, there was a huge crowd listening. If you see the chapter, Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, all speaks about the Sermon on the Mount. And this is one part where Jesus is saying, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of, of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. So what is Jesus trying to say by this? Can somebody tell me? What Jesus means to say is that we might like 
a lot of things. We might want to do so many things, correct? But I have to ask myself, whatever I'm doing in my life, is it a good thing or the right thing? There are many things we want to do in our life. We might want to, you know, help somebody. We might want to do this and we might want to do that. But I have to ask myself, in whatever I'm doing, am I doing what the Lord has asked me to do? Or am I doing my own things? I'm doing what I feel like doing. I'm doing what makes what I think is right, what my mind thinks is right. Because why I'm sharing this is because many a times I used to get caught up with this. I would try to do things which were good. There's nothing wrong with doing good things. But I have to ask myself, is this what God called me to do? For example, okay, uh, in the past, okay, I used to think that, okay, I have to, I can connect to God only in certain places. Like, you know, um, when we go to church, we attend mass, we feel the presence of God. Why? Because we are gathered over there. It's true. But the presence of God is not limited to the church. According to the new covenant, you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the church. That means we carry the presence of God within us wherever we go. We have the Holy Spirit within us, guiding us, telling us what to do. What is the right thing to do? I can say in the last two months, ever since I have started with my master's, okay? To be very honest, I don't really get time to sit and listen to the word like the way I used to do in the past. But I have the Holy Spirit inside of me speaking to me every moment. Every moment when there is a test, when there is a pressure, there's something that is challenging my senses. You know, something which my flesh wants to react and not respond. My flesh wants to take a corresponding action to what is thrown at me. The word of God challenges me, challenges my senses to submit to God's word. What I mean to say is, that we might think, okay, because I'm preaching the word, because I'm doing this, God is pleased with me. But the truth is, the Lord is pleased with one thing, and that is obedience. That's what Jesus says in this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And how can I do the will of God? The first step is when I know what the word says. The first step is I get knowledge from the word of God. When I spend time in the word, the word of God teaches me what I'm supposed to do. But it doesn't stop over there. Just hearing the word does not guarantee you that you're going to accomplish God's purpose for your life. Otherwise, you can just keep on hearing, just keep on listening, but and you would have seen results. You would have just keep on attending retreats and you would see results. But no, that's not, not how it should be. And that's not how it is. Hearing the word is the first step. But after hearing the word, what next? Are you paying attention to that word that is being preached to you? 
are you meditating on it are you reflecting on it and are you asking the holy spirit holy spirit can you show me how i can use this word in my life how i can apply this word in my life even when the pressure comes even when the frustration comes even when everything looks opposite to what i'm believing how can i use this word how i can be obedient to your word see god is not asking us to perform miracles miracles signs and wonders will follow you you only have to have a relationship with the lord and jesus is very clear in his word anybody who tells that jesus i love you with your words but you are not putting it into action you are only deceiving yourself because you said if you love me you will keep my word and that means walking in love no matter what happens around you when the pressure is very high are you going to react are you going to get annoyed are you going to see who is saying what or are you going to submit to the word of god and i'm telling you right now i get tested every day in my life i get so many opportunities to practice the love work where the flesh wants to give back there's pressure there are negative thoughts but when you keep renewing your mind you keep your focus stayed on god's word that is where you're taming your flesh to submit to god's word and that is obedience the will of the father requires obedience it requires me to submit to god's word whether i feel good or i don't feel good praise god thank you jesus now coming to the next part on that day many will say to me lord lord did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name and then will i declare to them i never knew you depart from me you evil doers so what is jesus trying to say many will say he is speaking about the day of judgment okay on that day refers to the day of judgment during the second coming of jesus where many will tell jesus lord we did this we prophesied we did this we cast out demons we saw signs wonders everything we did and then will i declare to them jesus is saying i never knew you depart from me you evil doers so how if that person was not living the life that jesus called him to live then how come all these mighty works are taking place that's the question even i had and that's where the lord said the mighty works the signs and wonders took place not because of the person but it took place because of the power in my name because jesus said in mark 16 verse 18 when believers lay hands on the sick the sick shall recover it's okay janisha we will not go over there you stick to this verse yeah when believers lay hands on the sick the sick shall recover whoever believes in me signs and wonders shall follow them so if any person uses the word the word is going to work for them but just because you are seeing signs wonders it doesn't mean that you are living a life of obedience what pleases god is a life of obedience where under pressure you want to do your own things you want to do what you feel like doing but you are submitting to god and saying lord even though my flesh is saying this 
I'm ready to humble myself and submit to what your word says. I'm not going to agree with what my flesh says. I'm going to agree with what your word says because when I say that I love you, that love is not human love, but that love is unconditional love. That love demands obedience. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So this scripture is speaking about my relationship with the Lord. When you really love somebody, even when it is hard, you are ready to sacrifice. A simple example. Now the mother okay, has a small baby. And say the mother has worked the whole day. And say on that particular day, her child got fever. Now, is the mother going to say, I'm so tired. I work 12 hours a day. Now, I just want to sleep. Is she going to keep the baby on another bed and tell baby, you do whatever you want. Even if you got fever, it doesn't matter. I need to sleep. Does she do that? Anybody? No. No, she doesn't do that. She stays awake. She doesn't sleep for a moment. Why? Because she loves her child. She is doing it out of love. And that's the exact kind of love, the unconditional love that Jesus wants us to walk in. And we cannot do it on our own. In our own strength, it is very, very impossible for us, I would say, to walk in love. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And the best thing is, the day you and I got born again, the Holy Spirit poured the agape love in our heart. And that's why you noticed suddenly the desire for the word became so much, the passion for the word became so much, the hunger for the word became so much that all you wanted to do is sit and listen to the word. All you wanted to do is focus only on the word and nothing else. That passion. Because at that point, you were in a baby stage where that emotions, feelings, all those things were there. But after a point... When the feelings and emotions dies down, you still have that same love inside of you. You still have the Holy Spirit inside of you convicting you and telling you to do the right thing. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The reason I'm sharing all this is because when, you know, I was new in the word, I used to go by my feelings and my emotions. Means I had this thing that I have to take a Bible study every day, no matter what. And I used to be so, uh, you know, strict or particular about it. Even on the days when I would have, you know, uh, duties in the hospital, like that whole night I'm supposed to be in the hospital, I would somehow take some time out and take the Bible study. Okay. I would somehow make sure I'm taking a Bible class and I would take it. And I used to feel good that, yes, I'm taking the Bible class. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I used to feel that. Okay. I used to feel proud of myself. I would say it like my relationship with the Lord was based on my actions what I'm doing. I'm praying. I'm taking Bible class even on a busy day, on a duty day also when there are so many things. I'm taking the Bible class. Such a good thing, right? But later on, you know, the Holy Spirit made me understand.
sec. Just a minute, okay? Just give me a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, praise God. So where was I? Yeah, I was saying that, uh, yeah, I was talking about my uh, Bible study during my duty. So the Holy Spirit made me understand, okay, that it is when you are posted on duty, God has put you over there to focus on what work is given to you and how you can be a blessing to everyone around you, okay? But you are distracted. Your attention is not on what's going to, how you can be a blessing to people there. But rather, your, bless, your focus is on how I can do this and how I can feel good. And that was something wrong which I was doing. I, I did not do it purposely. I did it out of ignorance because I did not, I was not mature enough, I would say, to, you know, discern between the good thing and the right thing. But the Holy Spirit is so good. He convicted me. He made me realize that what I'm doing is wrong and I have to make the corrections. Now, you also might find in your life, okay, there are so many areas where you might be not living the life, what the word says. All of us are in, you know, work in progress. We are going through different things. So, the best thing you need to understand is that I'm not supposed to worry. God wants me to make corrections. Whenever any correction is given to me, when the Holy Spirit speaks to me, all I have to do is simple. I just have to obey what the word says and make that correction. Except that in this particular area of my life, I'm going wrong and I have to make the correction. So the best thing in my life, I would say is when I started off, I have done these mistakes, but the best thing is I'm not over there anymore. The Holy Spirit helped me to make the right corrections. So I want to say for every person, even if you feel discouraged, there are some areas in your life where you feel that you are not living the life that God has called you to live. There is hope for you. Just ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, it is not in me. To, to do things on my own. I don't have the power. I don't have the ability in me to live a godly life. But with your grace, I can do everything. So when you talk to the Holy Spirit, he's the one who guides you. He's the one who convicts you. You know, in throughout the day, even though I'm not listening like literally to the word okay even when i'm doing my work the holy spirit is instructing me he's reminding me whatever i forget he's the one who tells me priya in this area you are going wrong in this area you need to make corrections and how he reminds me through the word whatever word i had been hearing all this while it becomes the rema word it speaks to me practically in the situation. Praise God. Would anyone like to add something or ask anything? Yes, Sister Hilda, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks, Priya. I was the... 
Uh, just uh, I saw your message and I said, okay, let me join now. Thank you for the session. You are absolutely right that uh, <clears throat> we have to obey the instructions of uh, the Holy Spirit and not worry about anything prior to coming in the word of God. And this comes back to your session yesterday that you had. It was too early for us in the US and especially since I've, I'm having COVID. <clears throat> I I listened to your session in later in the afternoon. It's all connected. When First of all, you spoke, what I can summarize, you spoke about humility. Everything comes from God and all the talents, the gifts that God has given us. We need to always keep him at the back of our mind. Secondly, um, we, we cannot worry about everything. I'm a person uh, because I can multitask uh, like anything. Um, I I was under the impression my children could multitask the same way. But, I, but the Holy Spirit one day whispered to me uh, when I was at the church to be patient. And I realized that what patience means. My children are at a younger age. They are like 20 and I'm 50. I can't expect them because of my maturity and my years of experience. I could multitask. I need to be patient with them. And give them space. Give them time. And leave it in the hands of God. Let If the Holy Spirit has instructed me to be patient, that means I need, he's asking me to trust in his power. My strength is all my strength was bringing food on the table and that food on the table was he was the provider of uh, bringing the food on the table educating them again he was the source for providing the resources for education everything else is left in the hands of the holy spirit so your teaching was so correct and the remaining what you said lord lord uh uh, that um, no, when we, the Lord might not, uh, um, no, when we come towards the Lord to ask anything later on in life on the day of judgment, it's what have you done throughout your journey on this earth in life? It's you have to live for His purpose. It's not just for yourself and your family, but how have you gone beyond that in terms of sharing he, the talents that we have uh, that He has given and. And also letting people know who has given you this talents and helping people, those who have any kind of issue, to go back to the Lord because He is the one who is a source and provider. There's no one else, no human can solve anyone's problems. Humans can solve anyone's problems only like it might be once, uh, it could be just 1% of the time. But who is going to provide this constant support for a person? And that's only trusting in God. Praise God. Praise Jesus. Awesome, sister, what you just shared. Actually, it's just an eye-opener for all of us, you know. Are we doing what God has called us to do? Or are we doing our own things, you know? Because many a time, sister, like... I will tell you, I want to take the Bible study. I want to hear the word. But then the Lord tells me what responsibility is given to you. I have planted you here. Why don't you do that? Right? So that is where, you know, the Holy Spirit convicts me. He tells me, see, don't compartmentalize your life as, okay, this is my personal life. This is my prayer life. This is my work life. We have a tendency to compartmentalize life, like the way I see it. But I'm beginning to realize that I have to take the presence of God. In, even in my work, I have to work with the Holy Spirit. Whatever I do, I have to do it for His glory and not for my purpose, not for my selfishness. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Anything? Any questions? 
Anything you want to ask? Praise God. Okay. So one homework for you all. Okay. This one verse that I have spoken on, I want you all to meditate on it and say, Holy Spirit, in the next 24 hours that I have with me, show me if am I doing Lord, Lord, or am I really doing what you are asking me to do? As you keep asking that one question, you will get convicted of so many things where you need to make corrections. I have been doing that. It's helping me. So I thought I'll share it with you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, okay. Jesus. Priya, uh, Sister Priya, I just, yes. the Holy Spirit is asking me to share a testimony. It's a good testimony that might help most of the people on this call. Uh, can I share? I'll make it short because I have to. Yes, sister, go ahead. Go ahead, sister. So, um, most of y'all, I think Sister Priya knows that I'm here in the US and I have uh, uh, two children. My elder kid is planning to, like here in the US, you have to first finish your undergrad, uh, your graduation, and then you need to go for apply for medical school. If y'all don't know, uh, Priya, Priya will know, medical school is extremely expensive in America. So the thing was, the undergrad, the graduation itself was expensive, but we paid for our child thinking that she was supposed to be in the engineering area. But when she expressed an interest for medical school, I told my husband, I'm going to pay for the medical school also. He said, uh, don't even speak that. You know how expensive? I said, no, we'll, it'll happen. The Lord will make it happen. And this is because past two years, I have been listening to testimonies after testimonies, listening to channels um, on preaching. So praise God. What happened was when I came to, I came to US at the age of 29. Uh, so almost 20 years back when I left I, I when I finished my undergrad engineering and then I did my MBA that was the time before 2000 and uh, at that time salaries were extremely low extremely low I think Priya you must have not been born also then uh, so but whatever I used to earn I used to give it to others share it with people uh, because I don't know Maybe the Lord was helping, asking me to give others, help people. Basically, it was like I was doing charity. And so much so, even when I came to the U.S., I used that resources, whatever I had in India, to help others. To help others for their any, any whether it was hospitalization, education, I don't know, whatever it was, I used to help. So, long story short, now, and I told my husband, I will pay for her college, medical college. But now where are the resources? So we started. So I said, let me go back and check in my account. But how could, how can you pay medical college in America with that limited resources when I just started working 20 years back in India? But the Lord did it for me. And I shared this with my brothers. I shared it with Brother Vincent. I said, half of my medical, my daughter's medical college fees is coming from that money. Now, I can't, if I was not a believer in God, I would wonder how did God multiply it 15 to 20 times when I've only given people. But that is how God, that's the kingdom of God, it operates. He had given me the wisdom to invest wisely and that whatever I invested, the dividend from it, I used to help people. And I used to bring my mother-in-law every year to America. She's every year, she comes for six months, she stays over here. And I never bothered, I never bothered about money because I know that the Lord provides. And this time he showed me. So praise God, we are going to be paying for, once my child decides to go for college, we are going to pay the fees. And I'm so uh, um, thankful to the Lord that he showed me that at any point of time, you trust in him. However big sum of money that you need in life, if you 
have served his purpose always work and i said this because i think the session was lord what is your purpose if your purpose in life was to help anyone and like when someone is in need don't even think about yourself when the day comes in your life don't even think of when the day will come and might come 20 years 30 years from now for you or your children he will help you exponentially and that's what he's doing to for me today praise god thank you jesus priya i'm yes. done yes yes praise jesus thank you jesus yeah yeah janisha tell praise god so actually what it was happened today means uh, yesterday uh, i doubted with you no sister just holy spirit to, today uh, during i am lunch in uh, like during my lunch time so i was be with you know, holy spirit so just i heard that voice only one time and uh, i don't know why because uh, after that i realized that is holy spirit and i am not willing to shy or i am not willing nothing because i am accepting my fault in front of my jesus no uh, that is uh, because don't criticize with anyone that is only once i heard that i don't know what is that meaning why holy spirit is telling really i, I forget for i uh, i didn't remember after that i slowly sit and thinking 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 and after that i'm asking for someone uh, for uh, so they are telling like condemning we, we don't want to uh, like make change others and we don't want to judge and uh, like we don't want to condemn oh, after that i realized that holy spirit may uh, give uh, gave me to uh, revelation of that thank you jesus praise god so see you got the voice of the holy spirit telling you that a the area where you needed to make the correction that is what this class is all about this class is not for us to change others or look at the faults of others what that person is doing what this person is doing but this class or this particular bible verse that we discussed today was mainly on how i can use the word to make corrections in my life if i start doing that the anointing of the holy spirit will be so powerful in my life signs and wonders will follow you like a shadow you don't need to go in search of those things the anointing in your life will attract people they will want to know how are you so calm how are you so patient is god thank Please. you jesus thank you jesus it confirming by holy spirit and yesterday same topic same class sister florita okay. uh, teaches uh, teaching us like everyone on agape love group so uh, because it is talking again and again means i want to correct myself in, in this uh, like i want to correct my uh, correct my uh, myself that those uh, yes, such a area in my life and so i want in the same way i want to renew my mind every day every second every hour so it was before irritated me why they are telling to me same thing same thing but it was same thing will uh, why they are telling same thing means i that holy spirit is convict holy spirit is making them to like in the same way holy spirit sending that only um, uh, some prophets and all disciples like a uh, laborers thank you holy spirit laborers and all so uh, we can't understand sometimes but and it when we are uh, continuing in the word of god we can understand slowly uh, slowly step by step so, so it was not a one day process it was a continue uh, being in the word of god right most of all yes yes absolutely it is not a one day process it is a continuous process every day you have to learn to die to your flesh the more you learn to die to your flesh that is where you experience the supernatural life that god has called you to live praise god thank you jesus praise god thank you jesus okay so anyone else before we close okay so if there's nothing more then we will close i request sister hilda to make the closing prayer 
Sure. <clears throat> Father God, um, in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we have all come over here today to listen to Sister Priya. First of all, <clears throat> first of all, I, um, Father, shower your abundant blessing on this girl Priya and her family. That um, an Ephesians three twenty <clears throat> comes true in her life that she sees exceedingly and abundantly more than she can even ask or imagine in her life. As for the people on this call who are here, <clears throat> I know only few names that I can think of. <clears throat> One is Janisha, uh, Sister Rosie, and all the others who are there on the call. Lord bless them as they are going to do their homework today to understand their purpose and whether they are truly doing the work for your kingdom, Lord. You show them the light, whisper in, your, in their mind so that they know these words are only coming through you and they are at all times aligned to the Holy Spirit. As they are aligned to the Holy Spirit, help them to touch other people's lives and bring others closer to God to show that our God is not just a living God, but He's an infinite God. He's there for us to to ensure that we have peace in our mind and the fruit of the Holy Spirit is being demonstrated by them in their works, in their action at all times. And people will be attracted towards them at all times. What is this no, What is this ingredient that they have that they are so much at peace? The ingredient is the power of the Holy Spirit which is in them and the love that they are showing others because they have experienced the love of God. Lord, we thank you and I thank you so much for helping me come out of COVID and I know that I'll get back my strength in today itself and I'll go back to my old ways of doing the things that you asked me to do. I thank you, I praise you, I adore you, I glorify you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister, for this wonderful prayer. Thank you all for joining in. We will continue whenever I take the next session. Praise God. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye. Good night. Blessed night. Thank you.